Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Uniting Business Live. This, of course, is the second installment of the annual Global Impact Forum hosted by the United Nations Global Impact. Now, my name is Nozi Poshabalala, and it is an absolute privilege to be your host and your MC for this event. Now, today, the Global Impact Forum will show showcase four initiatives to mobilize corporate action on the global goals. We're going to be looking at SDG ambition. We're going to be looking at the young SDG innovators. We're going to looking at target gender equality. And of course, we're also going to pay attention to the climate ambition accelerator. Now, all of these initiatives are designed to mainstream sustainable business practices and to scale solutions from the ground up uh, through the efforts of the global compact local networks around the world. Now, the forum will also zoom in on what it really takes to implement initiatives at regional, national, and of course, organizational level. Now, today we we're also going to be recognizing the International Day of Peace. And so the Global Impact Forum will conclude with the joint session with Peace One Day to highlight the private sector's role in peace building. And so prepare yourselves to hear from governments on their advancements through multi-stakeholder partnerships, uh, to hear from UN and civil society leaders on their vision on how they're going to go about scaling collective impact. Um, we're going to hear from business all the way from the executive level to the SDG innovators themselves on how their actions are leading towards meaningful progress in the achievement of the sustainable development goals. But before we get into this fantastic event, I do want us to pause and to take an opportunity to welcome you to the Hopin platform. I want to make sure that you get the most out of today's experience. Now, before I get started, I know that we are live streaming on UN Web TV. So I do want to say a special hello and extend a special welcome to all of those that are watching us on the UN Web TV screens. Now, as we get started, as we orientate ourselves with the Hopin platform, remember that we will have breakout sessions, which will be hosted on the side stages. The full agenda can also be found on the Hopin homepage with details on the sessions and their descriptions, as well as all the the speaker bios, including the directions on how to get to those different stages. I think it's absolutely exciting that we have over 7,000 attendees from 159 countries online today. So we do encourage you to be a part of this global moment and this global conversation. And so you can do that by looking at the event chat on the right-hand side of your screen, um, and you can connect directly with other attendees using the network and people features right here on Hopin. Now, we've tried to really make it easy for you to connect with fellow attendees. You can also see them in the attendee tab, which is also on the right-hand side of the screen. You can send them private messages. You can even reach out in order to have video chats with them. Now, the networking session, which I know is a big part of this experience, also allows you uh, to leave your information and to connect with others. And you can find this on the left left-hand side of your screen. Now, don't forget to head on over to the pavilion to explore the content studios. And that's where you're going to find content featuring our events, uh, our event sponsors and our event partners. And of course, if you want to learn more about the UN Global Compact itself, you can head on over to our UN Global Compact booth, and we will be more than ready to engage with you. Now, as always, we do want to keep the conversation going. We do want to amplify it to the rest of the world. And we're going to be doing this on a range of social media platforms on Twitter, on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. And the hashtag that we're using is hashtag Uniting Business Live. Now, remember that the registration uh, in Hopin is going to remain open throughout the day. So please feel free to share the excitement uh, on social media and invite your colleagues, invite uh, your community so that they can join us at a time that is convenient for them. Lastly, if you do need to step away for whatever reason, don't worry at all. 
all the recordings will be available on YouTube, um, on our YouTube page, specifically shortly after this event. So you're not going to miss out on anything. So we have an exciting day ahead of us. So it is time for us to roll up our sleeves and get started. Now, to kick us off, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Richard Curtis. Now, Richard is a screenwriter and a director. Uh, he's responsible for some household uh, names when it comes to film, like Notting Hill, like Bridget Jones's Diary, and more recently, Yesterday. However, what you might not know about Richard is that in 2015, Richard also founded Project everyone and this to help launch and promote the global goals for sustainable development and as of 2016 richard was formally appointed a un sustainable development goals advocate so without further ado please help me enjoy in welcoming richard curtis film director um film writer director and sdg advocate richard the floor is yours it's such an honor to be here talking to you all today uh, and I'm sure it's something of a surprise to both you and me uh, in an event full of world leaders. You'd be right to ask, what is the writer of Mr. Bean? Not to mention lots of questionable films like Love Actually that made Hugh Grant so rich and so unhappy doing and dressing this noble body. The answer is, I guess, that I'm an enthusiast and an optimist and that over the years I've tried to compensate for my dodgy films by doing all I can to fight for the justice and equity we all long for. When I was a young man, I set up a charity called Comic Relief, and for the last five years, I've been an advocate for the UN Sustainable Development Goals, about which I'm hugely passionate. And in my work for the UN, I've always been particularly interested in the power and importance of the Global Compact. Just to give you a bit of history here, in 2005, I worked on a campaign called Make Poverty History, which organized the Live Aid concerts on behalf of the Millennium Development Goals. And one of the things I remember most clearly was how hard it was getting business involved then. We had a couple of meetings with men in suits and they were all men and they looked at us as though we were dangerous card carrying communists and as though the MDGs were nothing to do with them at all. But how things have changed. A huge number of businesses have seen the light and risen to the challenges of the new goals. In a conversation with the Secretary General, he said to me that the greatest surprise and delight to him was the leadership and action the businesses were taking on the global goals, in many cases more courageously and with more determination than most countries. And this is a hugely important shift in the state of the world. You all know this, but business is where the biggest money is. Business is where the jobs are. Businesses are the people that world leaders listen to most and watch the actions of most, much more than charities and NGOs. And some hugely interesting things are happening. The public are starting more and more to look to businesses to behave in a way that improves the world, to have an active conscience. In many cases, they trust and expect more of business and its leaders than they do of politicians. And at the same time, we have a younger generation that is increasingly asking, what can I do in my actual life to do the right thing, rather than waiting for others to act? They passionately support movements like Fridays for the Future, the Women's Marches, Black Lives Matter. But one of their biggest actions is checking that the places they spend their money, that the products they endorse, are acting in line with high principles. So they make decisions on the food they buy, the clothes they buy, the transport they choose, based on how their actions will affect the well-being of mankind. It's a genuine and growing consumer revolution. And increasingly, and this is very important, employees in the workforce also want to believe that they're having positive effect on the world in their working lives. They want their companies to do the right thing. And the best people now choose to work for companies that are doing the right thing. So we find ourselves in a situation where business that has always had such power is now taking on its superpower to help the world, where all of you are the necessary heroes of the hour, able to make decisions that have a real impact on climate and justice and equity with all the actions you take on everything from equal pay to supply chains to sustainability. So let me just give you a couple of examples of things I'm particularly passionate about now 
pensions first or superannuations as the Australians call them. There are $47 trillion in the world's pension pot and most of those pensions are held through employees of companies. That money, when put in sustainable pensions, cutting out things like cigarettes and deforestation that harm the world and supporting businesses that are ambitiously sustainable, has a massive effect on how the world works. And every one of you can make that change, especially now that returns on sustainable pensions are equal and often higher than ordinary default pensions. Please do look into it. Please get it done. I'm part of a movement in the UK called Make My Money Matter. And in the last two years, we've seen £500 billion moving into sustainable pensions in the UK alone. And then, of course, I'm passionate about the global compact itself companies committed to the sustainable development goals. There are all sorts of degrees with which you can engage, but I've seen some companies that are putting the goals right at the heart of their decision making with extraordinary effect, cross-checking all their actions alongside the goals, not sacrificing competitiveness, but improving and changing their products, letting the public know they're doing it and increasing their profitability at the same time. It is no longer a case of morals versus money or value versus values. You can move your business towards equity and sustainability and grow your business by taking those actions. I congratulate all of you for being here and ask all of you to do all you can for the goals. In order to make things happen, you have to make changes. And when we work together, when leaders in industry set an example, then others do follow and it's a race to the top. This is my basic message. You have such power. When I started Comic Relief, I was a really unpromising prospect, a minor TV writer with terrible curly orange hair. But I organized my life a little in a different way. And then with the support of the public, with the support of comedians doing their job, with seeking out new ways of fundraising, and with passionate and brilliant employees at Comic Relief, we've now raised over $2 billion dollars. But every one of you is in an infinitely better position to get things done than I was. Don't ever underestimate your power and the importance of the decisions and changes that you make at this crucial time in the journey of the SDGs. You are all business avengers and the world needs saving. Finally, my particular job today is to mention something new that we're just launching called the world's to-do list. Our organization called Project Everyone is always looking for ways to make the goals more accessible and more famous. And this time we're being joined by a roster of excellent companies pointing out that the global goals are the world's to-do list. And they're doing it online, on billboards, even on actual buildings across the world, telling all their customers and colleagues about the goals in a new way. And at the same time, promising that they themselves will fight for them. We hope that you will all join in and help get the to-do list done. And here's a little film with lots of very large post-it notes just to remind you. Thank you all very much for your time today and all your present and future commitment to the goals.
Thank you so much, uh, Richard. What an excellent introduction to our program. And of course, you have reminded us that we are all business Avengers and the world needs saving. The world's to-do list, ladies and gentlemen, is what Richard has shared with us.